Hi everyone, welcome to space. In this very short video, we're going to take a brief tour of the inner planets of our solar system. Now these inner planets are Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. These are terrestrial planets, meaning they are rocky, physical, you can go touch them and they have solid ground. The other planets in the solar system are gas giants of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And you might notice there's no Pluto on the end. Poor Pluto was demoted to a dwarf planet back in August of 2006, which was nearly 20 years ago, everyone. If you want to, you can still celebrate Pluto every year on the 24th of August as we celebrate Pluto Demotion Day. Now, this little model that I made is not to scale, and thankfully we can help get some help from NASA, who provided a wonderful model for us to follow and examine our solar system. So if you want to follow along, go ahead and go to eyes.nasa.gov to take a wonderful look at our solar system. Now, here is the solar system, uh, all the way out to Neptune. You can see that outside Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter are quite a bit further away than our rather clustered inner solar system of Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. So first on our trip, we're going to take a look at Mercury. Mercury is the closest planet to the sun, and it is quite small. It's only about one and a half times the size of Earth's moon. And very much like our moon, Mercury has this cratered surface. It's very rough, and it's a planet of extremes. So Mercury has temperatures in the daytime that exceed 800 degrees Fahrenheit, and nighttime lows that reach a negative 290 degrees Fahrenheit, so over a 1,000 degree Fahrenheit swing. Mercury also has the shortest year. It orbits the sun only in, in only 88 Earth days. And conversely, a day on Mercury, if you wanted to see a full cycle, is very, very long, with a full rotation taking about 59 Earth days. So if you were on Mercury, you'd only get not even one and a half days before an entire year, a full trip around the sun had taken place. The next planet on our journey is Venus, sometimes dubbed Earth's evil twin. It's very similar in size, and it is our closest neighbor in the solar system. But it is evil compared to Earth because it is very hostile. Even though Mercury is closer to the sun, Venus is hotter, with average temperatures of 876 degrees Fahrenheit. Its atmosphere is mostly carbon dioxide, which traps in heat much like an extreme version of the greenhouse effect that we're experiencing on Earth. The clouds in Venus's atmosphere are also made of sulfuric acid. So if you could smell them, if you didn't immediately melt on the, on the surface of the planet, if you could take off a helmet and smell them, it would reek like rotten eggs. And even though, I will put a disclaimer here, the chances of this are very, very, very low, there is some possibility of simple life on Venus up in the atmosphere where temperatures are much more cool and there's chemical makeup that could support simple single cell organisms. Now again, this is a very low chance, but it is something that scientists are still researching and future missions may well either uh, confirm these suspicions or more than likely throw them out in the wastebasket. A full day on Venus takes 243 Earth days, and that's longer than it takes for a full Venus year, which only takes 225 Earth days, so a longer day than a year. The surface of the planet is home to valleys, mountains, and thousands and thousands of volcanoes which contribute to that carbon dioxide. Moving on, we're going to go to my favorite planet. It's our home in the solar system. It's home to everyone and everything that you've ever known, Earth. Earth is currently the only known home to biological life. Now, that doesn't say that there isn't more somewhere out in our grand universe, but for all we know, Earth is home to the only existence of life. It has plentiful features that allow for life to thrive on Earth, including its distance from the sun in the Goldilocks zone, its surface temperature, its atmosphere makeup, and the presence of liquid water. Earth is covered in mountains, volcanoes, plains, valleys, rivers, and oceans in particular cover 70% of the planet's surface. As you can see here, we're looking at half the, half the globe, and it's all blue. Earth does have one moon, our beloved Luna. Let's go to the moon. 
and it was very likely formed by a collision with Earth that happened billions of years ago. Our moon averages to be somewhere, in, as it orbits us, to be about 238,000 miles away, give or take or a few hundred miles. Now, Earth's surface, or the moon's surface, has been studied extensively and has been subject of over 140 scientific missions, including the famous Apollo missions that sent astronauts to the moon. And finally, the last planet in our inner solar system is Mars. Mars is often dubbed the red planet for its color. It does look a reddish hue, and the reason for that is that much of the surface is oxidized. Essentially, minerals on the surface have rusted. The surface is home to large canyon systems and large basins, and the largest volcano in the solar system. The presence of these lake beds that I talked about in valleys suggests that Mars at one time was very likely home to liquid water. The only current presence of water that we know is ice that's near the poles and some presence of salt water. Now with evidence that Mars was once warmer and wetter, scientists also question if Mars was ever home to biological life or in maybe small pockets still could be. Multiple missions have been carried out in Mars since the 1960s, including multiple probes, landers, rovers, and copters. Now, Mars is the only other planet in the inner solar system that has moons. And these are the small moons of Deimos and Phobos. And both of these are really on the edge of even being moons themselves, although they do count as moons because they do orbit the planet uh, and do so successfully. They are kind of oblong potatoes. Uh, they aren't large enough themselves to become spherical in shape and instead appear to be large asteroids. And with that, that's our tour of the inner solar system, home to all of the terrestrial planets in the known solar system.